Hello everyone, I'm Bishop Edward Molesic of the Catholic Diocese of Cleveland. It gives me great pleasure to have been asked to be a part of this annual Catholic Men's Conference in the Diocese. I think it is wonderful that events like this are held on a regular basis to allow us to insulate ourselves from our busy lives and take time to consider those things that help us deepen our faith and transform our lives to grow ever closer to God. So I would like to thank the organizers of this event for your hard work and dedication in bringing this gathering together and uh, making it happen. I was installed as your 12th bishop in September of last year, 2020, and while I have only been in the diocese about six months now, I have come to know the people of Northeast Ohio as warm and caring and, and very generous. Thank you for that. Despite the pandemic, I have been able to travel to a number of parishes for Mass and meet so many of the faithful. I enjoy that so much. I also had the opportunity to witness the generosity of the people and of the goodness of our employees and volunteers at Catholic Charities. What a great institution that is, great organization that is, and they take care of the most vulnerable in our communities. It truly warms my heart to see all the church is doing to meet the, the needs of those most in need, especially during the pandemic. So much work has been done by so many good and generous people, including many of you. So again, thank you for the invitation to be a part of this program today. Since this is a Catholic men's conference and this is the month of March, a month that's usually dedicated to St. Joseph, I thought it would be uh, good to talk about Pope Francis's recent apostolic letter titled in Latin, Patris Corde, which in English means with a father's heart. It's an apostolic letter that recalls the 150th anniversary of the declaration of St. Joseph as patron of the Universal Church. This anniversary is the reason why Pope Francis proclaimed December 8, 2020 to December 8, 2021 as a year of St. Joseph. To be honest, I am very close to a man named Joseph myself. My dad, Joe Molesic, who as many of you know is 103 years old. He's doing well and, and so far staying healthy, thank God, in his apartment. He's in an independent living facility, has gotten both of his vaccination shots, and is hoping to get back to walking outside soon, something he likes to do. But today I want to reflect on Pope Francis's letter announcing the year of St. Joseph and what it means to be a father in the mold of St. Joseph. And let me be upfront and say that much of my reflection will come directly from the words of Pope Francis, who obviously has a deep devotion to St. Joseph himself. In his letter, Pope Francis wonderfully describes the fatherly attributes of Joseph, attributes that all of us as Christian men should strive to nurture. Fathers can be birth fathers, adoptive fathers, and like me, spiritual fathers. I believe that all men are called to have the kind-hearted, strong, and faithful qualities of St. Joseph. He's a great model of manhood and fatherhood for all of us who are Christian men. Pope Francis describes St. Joseph as a beloved father, a tender and loving father, an obedient father, an accepting father, a father who is creatively courageous, a working father, and a father in the shadows. I will talk more about these characteristics of St. Joseph in a moment, but I want to share with you that I find the Pope's letter so very timely as it comes in the midst of this awful worldwide pandemic. I agree with the Pope's assertion that the experience of living through this pandemic has helped us see more clearly the importance of ordinary people who, though far from the spotlight, exercise patience and offer hope every day. These are the doctors, nurses, and caregivers, grocery workers, safety forces, teachers, transit workers, food service workers, and postal workers, anyone who has continued in their role helping others during these challenging times. This includes our priests, deacons, lay ministers, and church volunteers, too. Throughout the pandemic, many persons resembled St. Joseph who quietly did what was expected of him. These are the saints next door, as Pope Francis describes them. Being a man in the shadows, there isn't a whole lot in the Gospels about St. Joseph, but there is enough for us to paint a picture of him in our mind's eye, appreciate what sort of father he was, what sort of man he was. 
We know Joseph was a carpenter, betrothed to Mary. He was a just man and ever ready to carry out God's will. When angels spoke to him in four dreams, he followed their lead. He beheld the birth of the Messiah in a stable. He witnessed the adoration of the Magi. He fled with them, his family, to Egypt when Herod was attempting to kill the infant Jesus. He brought them back home when it was safe. He and Mary anxiously looked for Jesus in the temple when they lost track of their 12-year-old. How many parents are always worried about their young, young kids, just like the Holy Family? It is very telling that after Mary, no saint is mentioned more frequently in the papal teachings of the church than Joseph, her spouse. Let me turn now to share with you some of the attributes that Pope Francis says each of us can discover in Joseph, the man who goes unnoticed, a daily, discreet, and hidden presence, an intercessor, a support and guide in times of trouble. St. Joseph reminds us that those who appear hidden or in the shadows can play an important role in the history of salvation. Each of you as men, too, can play an important role in God's plan for all of us. Joseph's life is for us a model of holiness. Most of us will work for the kingdom of God in the shadows, but work for the kingdom of God we must. First and foremost, in his apostolic letter, Pope Francis says that Joseph, St. Joseph, is a beloved father. He was the spouse of Mary and the father of Jesus. And his role was to be completely at the service of the entire plan of salvation. And that he concretely expressed his fatherhood by making an offering of himself in love. A love placed at the service of Jesus who was growing in maturity in his home. Now I think of the writings of Bishop Robert Barron. Many of you know him. Great guy. Bishop Barron often reminds us that we are not at the center of the world. I am not at the center of this world. Rather, each of us plays a part in God's drama. Not our God drama, not our story, but, but God's story. Jesus knew that, that he was a part of God's story for this world. A piece of that puzzle. So are all of us, a piece of that puzzle. It was not about Joseph. It was about Jesus. His life was about God, the God he was nurturing and protecting and take care, taking care of with his wife Mary. So finding out the part we play in God's plan for the world is key to our own happiness. We are happy, guys, when we do God's will. It's as simple as that. God was always at the center of Joseph's life and the life of the Holy Family. That Holy Family, Mary and Joseph, centered their life on Jesus. Secondly, Pope Francis characterizes St. Joseph as a tender and loving father. In St. Joseph, Jesus saw the tender love of God. Let me go back to my parents. They were the first faces I saw in this life. They were the face of God's love for me. Joseph was that face for Jesus, along with Mary. Somehow in our relationships, we must become the face of love for each other. We are, after all, images of God. God is love. A priest must be the face of love for his congregation. A husband must be the face of love for his wife, a father for his children. Even an employer must be the face of God's love for his or her employee. In St. Joseph, Jesus sees the God who helps us accept our weaknesses because we aren't perfect at this. We have to be helped in our, our humanity because it is through and despite our fears, our frailties, and our weaknesses that most divine designs are realized. realized. Listen, guys, God uses us as weak men to realize his plan. We put him at the center and, and take his lead, but sometimes we stray, but he always calls us back. I think that St. Paul said it best in his second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 12, therefore I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints for the sake of Christ. For listen to this, for when I am weak, then I am strong. God shines through our humanity. God uses our weakness and in his power makes good come from us. As Christian men and not 
perfect men, we must let God be our strength. That is exactly what St. Joseph did. When we are afraid or unsure or not in control, who of us is ever in control, we must let God take charge. That means we put our lives in the hands of God. Our Holy Father takes the opportunity in his reflection on St. Joseph to remind us that God wants to use our frailty to show us his mercy. He says that only God's tender love will save us from the snares of the devil who wants to keep us in our sinful state. Pope Francis says, this is why it is so important to encounter God's mercy, especially in the sacrament of reconciliation. The Holy Father says in his apostolic letter that as the Lord did with Israel, so Joseph did with Jesus. He taught him to walk, taking him by the hand. He raised the infant to his cheeks, bending down to him and feeding him. What wonderfully descriptive scriptural language the Holy Father uses to describe Joseph as a father to Jesus, as Joseph saw him, grow daily in wisdom and in years. Joseph was not a tyrant. He was a dad. Like any human father, Joseph experienced doubts and fears, but through it all, God's plan was at work. Is there any man without fear among us? I know I have my fears. If there is any man without fear among us, I think he's lying to himself, to us, or to both. We have our fears. Another trait of St. Joseph was that he was obedient. Our Holy Father, Pope Francis, writes that as he had done with Mary, God also revealed his saving plan to Joseph in dreams, which in the Bible was a way for God to make his will known to others. Remember, the angel in a dream revealed that he should not worry about taking Mary as his wife. In the second dream, the angel told Joseph to flee to Egypt with Mary and Jesus. And later, through the third dream, he was instructed by the angel to return to Israel. In his fourth and final dream, Joseph was directed to go to Galilee, to Nazareth, where Jesus would grow in wisdom and in age. In every situation, Joseph, like Mary, declared his own fiat, so be it, your will be done, which clearly marks Joseph as an obedient minister in the mystery of salvation. No matter how God lets his will be known to us by an angel or by a passage of scripture or through the teaching of the church, we as Catholic Christian men must learn to say, thy will be done and mean it, be obedient to the Father's will. Pope Francis characterizes St. Joseph as an accepting father. Joseph accepted Mary unconditionally after his dream. Pope Francis says this, today in our world where psychological, verbal, and physical violence toward women is so evident, Joseph appears as the figure of a respectful and sensitive man. Even though he does not understand the bigger picture, Joseph makes a decision to protect Mary's good name, her dignity, and her life. The life Joseph lives isn't one of passivity, but of courage and acceptance. He didn't seek explanations from God about why this was happening to him or his family. All he did was seek to accept God's plan for him. How about us, guys? So often we want detailed explanations when the only thing to do is simply accept God's will for us. That's the story of St. Joseph. There is a lot in this life that we will never understand. God gives us Jesus just as he gave Jesus to Joseph. Pope Francis says, our Lord can give us the strength needed to accept life as it is with all of its contradictions, frustrations, and disappointments. Jesus' appearance in our midst is a gift from the Father. Jesus says to us, do not be afraid. Let me also quote the Holy Father again. We need to set aside all anger and disappointment and to embrace the way things are, even when they do not turn out as we wish. Not with mere resignation, but with hope and courage. Our lives can be miraculously reborn if we find the courage to live them in accordance with the gospel. It does not matter if everything seems to have gone wrong or some things can no longer be fixed. God can make flowers spring up 
from stony ground. And that ends the quote of our Holy Father. I'm thinking about a story I read about a young African-American boy who suffers from sickle cell anemia. He was asked that if he could have been born without it, would he have chosen to be free of the disease? He thought a while and then said, I don't think so. There's a lot of things that I learned having sickle cell. I learned patience with everyone. I learned how just to be positive. An amazing thing that boy said. The crosses we have in this life can teach us many things. We shouldn't be so quick to try and get rid of our crosses. This does not mean that we are complacent. No, not at all. We have courage like Saint Joseph to use the resources that God gives us to make a better life for our families, the ones we love, and for ourselves. We do not sit idly by and let the world engulf us. No, we have hope that as Saint Paul said, all things work together for good for those who love God. We do not need to look for shortcuts, but we confront reality with open eyes and then we let the Lord do what we cannot do. With God, all things are possible. And often it is true that if God seems not to help us, it's because God is actually trusting us to plan, to be creative, and to find solutions for ourselves. Joseph was a resourceful man, blessed with a brain, physical strength, faith, and creativity. We must use the gifts that God has given us as well. God trusts each of us men to use the gifts that we already have to do what God wants us to do, beginning with the faith, the gift of faith itself. You know, guys, we are stewards of many gifts that God has given to us, and He gives us these gifts to be used for the sake of the kingdom, for the sake of each other. Pope Francis uses the occasion to remind us that Joseph, in every account of him in the Bible, would always get up, take the child and his mother, and do whatever God commanded of him, not always asking why. The Pope continues, Indeed, Jesus and Mary, his mother, are the most precious treasure of our faith too, and we must do all we can to protect our faith in Jesus our God, defend our faith, our Catholic faith, and share our Catholic faith in him with others. I think that Mary is the greatest evangelist because she brings Jesus to everyone she meets. But we should be evangelists too and bring Jesus with us to everyone we meet. And where will we find Jesus? In the tabernacle, yes. And in scripture. And if we want Jesus in the flesh, we find him in the poor, lonely, rejected, suffering, and those the world rejects, there is Jesus too, as he tells us in the gospel. A visible, perhaps the most visible attribute of St. Joseph is that of his role as a working father. St. Joseph was a carpenter who earned an honest living providing for his family. The Holy Father writes that clearly Jesus learned the value, the dignity, and the joy of what it means to have worthwhile work from St. Joseph. Work allows us to participate in God's ongoing creation of this world, to make it better, to make it a better place, to show God's love to his creation. Work gives us the satisfaction of putting our gifts at the service of society and fraternal communion. Especially in this time of higher unemployment during the pandemic, we must always pray to St. Joseph the Worker for his intercession in helping us find ways to express our conviction that no person, no family should be without meaningful and dignified work. No one who is without work should be without dignity. And the final characteristic of St. Joseph expressed by the Holy Father in his apostolic letter is the image of St. Joseph as a father in the shadows. Pope Francis cites Polish writer Jan Dobrzynski, who in one of his novels used the image of St. Joseph as an earthly shadow of the Heavenly Father, who watched over and protected him. The Pope posits that when a man accepts the responsibility for the life of another, in some way he becomes a father to that person. He says that fathers are not born, but made. A man does not become a father simply by bringing a child into the world, but by taking up the responsibility to care for that child. Whenever a man accepts responsibility for the life of another, in some way he becomes a father to that person. All men can be fathers. We are called to be fathers. 
not all of us will be biological fathers, but all of us are meant to care for someone as men who love. Whether married or single, priest, deacon, or layperson, Jesus asks us to be like his earthly father, St. Joseph, and become an image of his heavenly father and his heavenly father's love in the world. The church needs fathers too. Pray for vocations to fatherhood. In a special way, we pray for men to answer the call to marriage in the church and for an increase in men willing to accept the vocation of priesthood and other ordained ministries. We need men to show us a father's love. We need you men to do that for our kids, for our neighbors, for our parishes, for me, and for the salvation of the world. Men, we need you to be devout, but not only devout, we need you to be faithful. We need you to hear God whispering to you in your dreams and use your God-given resources to do God's will. We need you men to have the heart of Joseph, a man who did not look for notoriety, but did what needed to be done to put God in the center of his life. And that means to put Jesus in the center who is both the Son of God and the Son of Mary. We need you to love your wives and your families, your sons and your daughters, your moms and your dads. We need you to show us how to follow Jesus as men of God. Show us how to do that, to be a man in love with God. To recap, what did the Holy Father, Pope Francis, tell us about St. Joseph? St. Joseph was a beloved father, a tender and loving father, an obedient father, an accepting father, a creatively courageous father, a working father, and a father in the shadows. There are many ways to be a father to someone else. Let's try to use St. Joseph's example to encourage us to be the best men that we can be. In that way, we become holy, men destined by God to be saints. That's our ultimate goal, to be in heaven with Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, and our deceased relatives gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, and our friends too. Now let us pray, using the prayer to St. Joseph that Pope Francis used to close his letter. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To you, God entrusted his only Son, in you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us mercy and courage and defend us from every evil. Amen. Thank you for this opportunity to be a part of this important gathering. I think this is a blessing for our diocese. Thanks to the organizers for all your hard work and to everyone watching for paying attention. Let me leave you with these thoughts. As we are in the middle of Lent, let's not waste this precious time, which is also a gift to us from God, to be used for good. Let's make our way back to the Lord with our whole heart Let's be reconciled to God, for gracious and merciful is he, slow to anger, rich in kindness, and thank God, relenting in punishment. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed Lent, everyone, and may God bless you and those you love.